Today we're gonna to be talking about how to de-squeeze your anamorphic lens footage inside Adobe Premiere Pro to create a custom anamorphic de-squeeze just for your footage. What's up everybody? My name's Jason from EO7 Media and 4 Love Films and what do you guys think of the new angle? You get to see this side of the room. That's exciting. Guys, make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you follow us because we have a lot going on very, very soon. I'm super excited for so much more stuff coming down the pipeline. This year, I am getting crazy booked. We are flying all around the country this year for a giant project, but I will be showing a lot of BTS. Make sure you follow us on EO7 Media on our Instagram to check out what we're doing behind the scenes and lots of fun updates. I'm gonna be doing a lot more filmmaker uh, tutorials like Adobe Premiere or on film sets or theory-based stuff. And then make sure you check out our new upcoming web show called Coffee and Cameras, where my photographer partner Hilda and I sit down and we talk about everything from digital marketing, social media marketing, uh, how to use video and photo for your business, or just really whatever we want to talk about, including the latest stuff that we enjoy doing. So make sure you tune into that because that show is going to be awesome. I'm super excited to release it. You already know what we're talking about, but for a little bit more of a depth to why I'm talking about this, Recently, my cinematographer friend, Victor, shot some footage that I'm going to be editing and he shot it with the new Siriu, Siriu, Sirius? Siri, 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 seriously? And he shot it with this lens right here and it's the version two. So while the version one was 1.33 D squeeze, this new one, while it's being advertised as a 1.5 squeeze, is actually a little bit off. So through quite a few tests on his end and a couple of his friends, they discerned that it's actually a 1.52 times squeeze, which means we need to de-squeeze that 1.52 times, not 1.5. Be sure you stick around to the very end for my very important note dealing with this. All right, you guys ready? I'm ready, let's dive in. So if you wanna use the internal easy setup for the anamorphic de-squeeze, it's really easy. The first thing you do is go into Premiere Pro, find your clip inside your project window, right click on it, go down to modify, click on interpret footage. Now usually this is where you go to do the slow motion features, things like that. But we're gonna go down to pixel aspect ratio and you're gonna hit conform to, and most of your footage that you'll be shooting, square pixels 1.0. So if you have anamorphic footage, you would usually go down here to HD anamorphic 1080 to 1.33 or 1.5 depending on your aspect ratio. But what if your new lens is actually not on here? Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to fix this. Now, before we jump in, I want to let you know that this is how I figured out how to do this. If it doesn't work for you, let me know in the comments, but I really want to know how you can create a custom de-squeeze number that is not a pre-programmed preset inside Premiere. So let me know if you figured out another way how to do this. I'm going to show you how I did it. It's so weird looking over to this side. I feel like I'm being like watched. So the first thing you're gonna do, right click on your clip, select properties, and make sure you are at your desired resolution with your original footage. You're probably shooting 4K, so you're at 3840. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna open up our handy dandy calculator and do a little bit of math. You're gonna type in 3840 times 1.52. One now that gives us 5836. We're gonna get rid of the 0.8 and we're just gonna get 5837. You're gonna create a new sequence, go into settings, go into the video area right here and you're gonna change this 3840. We're gonna keep the vertical the same. We're gonna change the horizontal to 5837. So when you shoot anamorphic, you're actually having a much wider frame. Go through here really quick, make sure everything else is set up ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and change the name here to anamorphic correct. And boom, here we go. As you can see, we have a nice wide shot right here. So if I were to go ahead and bring in some footage, as you can easily see, the footage is really squeezed and it's really nasty looking. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna go up to effects control, go under motion. Under motion, you're gonna see scale. Under that, you're gonna have a little tab called uniform scale. You're gonna unclick that. We're gonna do one more math thing really quick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 100 times 1.52. That comes out to 152.0. Go ahead and hit enter and boom. It's stretched out, it looks perfect, it's accurate, and it looks great. This is your super easy workaround to get around this. Now, 
All you gotta do is let's say bring in a couple more clips right here. We can copy this clip, the effects on this clip. And just like any kind of effects that you would ever do, you're gonna highlight all the new clips and you can see all the footage here is squeezed up pretty gnarly. We're gonna right click and we're gonna paste attributes and we're gonna make sure when the page attributes windows comes up, we're gonna go in there and select, make sure that motion is selected, but nothing else. And boom, look, it disqueezed all the footage and oh, look at that gorgeous lens flare right there. And while this might not be super scientific and maybe correct, this is what the image looks like. I don't wanna de-squeeze this into a 38040 by 2160 and have the black bars on it. This is how I want the image to look. My cat Rex stole my dog's bed, so she's pacing back and forth. So the most important aspect here is to be able to present your image how the image was intended to be presented. Whether you are just the shooter, just the editor, or the shooter and the editor combined, it really matters how you wanted it to originally look. So while I wasn't the cinematographer on set shooting this, it is my job to represent what the cinematographer had in mind, how the image should look. So I shouldn't be doing this how I imagine it should look. I should be representing his image. So that way there's a correlation and teamwork together. And then I don't go in and ruffle someone's feathers by screwing up their original vision. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're having an awesome day. Make sure you be better and do something awesome today.